we're going to look at some other aspects of renting an apartment, some things that you really need to know, things like security deposits and if things are, are broken and can you be evicted, those kind of things. The South Dakota Attorney General has this information in a pamphlet, and I just went to their webpage, and it's all right here. These are also in the South Dakota laws. Remember when we looked at South Dakota laws earlier in the year? We looked at criminal law, but there's also chapters on every law in South Dakota, including rental laws. This pamphlet that they have is kind of summarizes it, puts it in, in more layman's term. Um, so I want you to be aware of that because when you rent an apartment, there's a good chance that you might have a conflict with a landlord and you need to know what kind of laws protect you, but you also need to know what kind of responsibilities there are. We're going to do a, a shorter version of that. I'm going to go through some of the, the more important things of it, but I want you to be aware of this. Now you can either get your notes by just reading through this and I highlight some things like security deposit and so on but I will also kind of walk you through those so if you'd rather have a lecture on it we can do that I'm not going to do a PowerPoint like I normally do instead I'm gonna put these side by side so you may have to refer to them some if I go too fast or obviously you can pause it and so on but let's put these up side by side so this is your notes but these are your notes, and, and let's start with a security deposit, which you will find right here. Now, the purpose of a security deposit is to protect the landlord if you break stuff. So if you break a window or stain the carpet or so on, and then you move out, the landlord should have some money to be able to repair and fix the things that you, you have damaged or destroyed. So your security deposit is money that is held by the landlord. It's your money. If you don't make any damages to your apartment or, or it doesn't need any repairs when you move out, you deserve to get that security deposit back. It's just being held in case. But if you do damage your apartment, they can use that security deposit to fix whatever damages you did. The landlord cannot require of a security deposit in excess of one month's rent. So if you're paying $500 a month rent, the most a security deposit can be is $500, unless there's some special circumstances. Now, pets are the, probably the best example. So a security deposit can be higher than a month's rent if you have pets, because pets can cause more damage. Um, okay, so what must the landlord do when the tenant moves out? Well, they got to give them that security deposit back or tell them that they're keeping it or a portion of it. And they have two weeks to do that. If a tenant then says, all right, how much are you keeping? Well, a landlord can only keep as much as needed to fix the damages you did. So let's say you moved out and everything in the apartment was fine, but there was a stain in the carpet and the carpet needed to be cleaned. And it cost them $150 to get it cleaned then they can only keep $150. They can't keep your entire security deposit, just only as much as needed to repair the damage you left behind. On the other hand, you should know too though, if you cause more damage than what the security deposit is for, you can be billed for the remainder of that damage too. A landlord can say, oh, well, I'm keeping that security deposit, but you, as a tenant, have the right to ask for an itemized account of what is being withheld. Now, what an itemized account is, is it's specific to where you're keeping the money. So if a landlord says, I need $150 to clean the carpets, I use $50 to repair a hole in the wall, I use $300 to fix a screen, uh, a, a, a screen on a window, those kind of things. But that itemized account would be a, a document that lists what they fixed and how much money it costs. So you can see specifically where that security deposit was used and, and, and maybe you can challenge it. Just because it's, a, a landlord says there's damage doesn't mean there, there really was damage. Um, so you can challenge that like anything else we can challenge it and that's where small claims court kind of works and, and 
my guess is some of you will go to small claims court with your landlord over a security deposit. I would almost guarantee it. Okay, so you ask for an itemized account. They have 45 days to give you that itemized account. Now, there's a number of rules here in the security deposit thing. And what the law says is if the landlord fails to follow these rules, they lose the right to keep any of your security deposit. So if you ask for an itemized account and they don't provide it, then they lose the right to keep any of your security deposit no matter what. And you can sue for up to $200. All right. I think you should read this to get more of the specifics, but I want to at least go through some of it. The right of the um, right of quiet enjoyment, or it's sometimes referred to as the, the covenant of quiet enjoyment, deals with when a landlord can enter. And really, the landlord can. Just because they own the place, they're renting it to you. You become essentially the proprietor there. They don't have the right to just come in anytime they want. But they do have the right to inspect if they give you a 24-hour notice. Okay, So they can make a reasonable inspection, but they have to give you notice to do that. And sometimes landlords think, think, well, hey, I own this place. I can go in whenever I want. That is not true. There is a, a situation where a landlord could enter an apartment without that, that notice. And that is if there's some kind of emergency. Let's say that you're out of town and we get you know, one of those gushers of a rainstorm. We get like five inches of rain in, a, in only a few hours, and the landlord is concerned that the basement is flooded, and they can't find you. They can't get a hold of you. You know where to be found. In that situation, they may be able to enter that apartment to check because that would be an emergency circumstance. So there are some emergency circumstances in which a landlord can enter without a 24-hour notice, but for the most part, they cannot. A uh, couple more things that we should look at here, and one is uh, habitu habituability. I'm saying that incorrectly, um, but the landlord is, is supposed to uh, provide a place that's fit for human habitation in exchange for you are going to give them money, right? It's a, it's a contract. Okay, so fit for human habitation means that it has electricity, it has water. You know, the windows are not broken, the locks work, those kind of things. Okay, so if a landlord fails to do that, uh, let's say, well, South Dakota, you got to have a furnace. So let's say it's in the wintertime and the furnace doesn't work. Well, that's part of it being fit for human hab uh, habitation. Okay, so you have to notify the landlord that the, that the furnace is not working, and then they have a reasonable time to fix it. And if they don't fix it, if they are not providing that place, uh, a place that's fit for human habitation, you have two remedies or options. And you probably should, again, read through this. But one remedy or option is to move out. The landlord is not doing what the contract says they may do, and that gets you out of a contract, even if it's a year-long contract. Now, remember, you have to notify the landlord of what it is. So, again, if the furnace is not working and you don't notify them, you can't just move out and say, well, you're not providing me a a place that's fit for human habitation because they didn't know that. Okay, so it, it kind of makes sense, but you need to notify the landlord of what needs to be repaired, and then you need to have a reasonable amount of time to fix it. But if they don't fix it within that reasonable amount of time, one of your options is to move out. A second option or remedy you have is to fix it yourself or to pay somebody to fix it yourself uh, and then deduct that money from rent. So you could call... Uh, a furnace repair person, they would come in, let's say they fix it, let's say it costs $300 to repair that, then you could deduct $300 from your next, month, your next month's rent. Keep all of your receipts and notifications that you did, uh, you've, you've done all these things uh, in case there's any questions on those. But again, read through this, but fit for human habitation um, and what happens if things are broken, those are kind of important stuff. Now, if you break it yourself, like if you are playing baseball in the house and you throw a baseball through a window, then it's your responsibility to fix that window. But if that window is broken because of a hailstorm, then that's the landlord's responsibility to fix that window. Not everything falls within this fit for human habitation. Like a light bulb being burned out, that's your responsibility to fix. 
but the plumbing, the heating, the electrical, those are things that fall under the landlord's responsibility to, to provide you with a place that's fit for human habitation. All right. The last thing I want to talk about is evictions, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on evictions. I just want you to know that a landlord cannot just evict you. Only court-ordered evictions are allowed in South Dakota. So the landlord can't say, you know what, I don't like you anymore, boom, you're gone. Can't do that. But they can begin an eviction process, which doesn't take very long. I think it's about 10 days. Uh, they provide a, something to the court, a complaint. You have to provide an answer. There's a court hearing, and then a judge will determine if you're evicted or not and what, what day that you need to be out of there. There are a number of grounds for eviction, you know, damaging the apartment, using it for something that's not intended to for, excuse me, let's say you have a business in there, but, but it's not intended for a business. You know, there's a number of things, and you should read some of these on, on evictions, but uh, I do want you to know that only court-ordered evictions are allowed in South Dakota. And sometimes landlords either don't know these rules or know them but don't follow them. And I think it's always good for us tenants to know what kind of rules there are, but also the responsibilities we have. But also, some of you may be landlords in the future too. You need to know what the rules and the laws are in South Dakota too. So. Those are some of the important things I think you need to know about uh, renting in a house or apartment. There are more things here, you know, um, that you should look through. There's some tips and advice. There's some other rules that I didn't talk about, but um, these are some of the basics.